Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd like to share with you how to make this rather attractive fake ostrich feather quill pen. So depending on how big you want your ostrich feather to be, I'm going to be making mine just a little bit bigger than I actually want because then I can trim it down properly. So I've got a strand of ordinary knitting thread and I'm going to just fold them over. So I've just taken some wool off and now I've got 20 strands of each of my different sizes. So I'm starting with size 30 centimeters, 25, 20, 15, 10 and eight and then i'm just going to cut them all in the corners to separate them so you need 20 strands of each of the sizes so cut them in half i'm using this fencing wire which is a 0 0.9 millimeter wire and what i've done is i've cut off um, 60 centimeters and I've folded it over so that it's in half. Now, this is probably way too much, but I'd much rather have too much than too little. I'm putting the folded end of the wire into the chuck. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take the wire and put it into the chuck of the drill and tighten that. So once you've cut all your thread, you've got a pattern that goes like that. So now what we're going to do is, once we've put our wire into the chuck, we're just going to turn that just a little bit just to start it off. So just holding it a little bit and just turn it. So that's enough to hold it all together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take all our pieces of knitting thread or wool um, and put them all into the wire. So try and make them so that they lie a little bit flat like that. And just open the wire, put them in, see that they're about the same on either side. So that's one lot. Then you've got the next ones, checking to see they're about the same. Just try not to have them too bulked up, so try and separate them just a little bit like that. And then we put the shorter ones in. Check that they're about half. These ones you'll probably have to hold because they're not going to balance that. Just flatten them out a wee bit. And then the last lot we put in as well. And then take your wires and close them up like that. Now what you need to do is take a pair of pliers and hold it tight at the end of all your threads. So now we're going to just twist all these wires together. So there we have them all twisted onto our wire. I'm going to just manually do this end piece a little bit more Yes, I don't want the wire to snap. We can take it out of the chuck. And there we have all the knitting thread attached to our piece of wire. Now, if you think that you want it to be a little bit tighter, just go a little bit more in the drill. Now what you do is you just start separating it so that you've got even amounts on both sides. Once you've separated them and you've got roughly the same amount on each side, now what you do is you take a fine tooth comb and leaving about a centimetre from the wire, start teasing all of the outside ones out. So just like this. I just use my thumb as a guide to hold the pieces together and then you just comb them out. Sometimes you get little knots in them like this one where it was joined. So you just have to pull that apart and then continue brushing it out or combing it out. So eventually you've got something like that and then just do the whole one on both sides. 
Once you've combed one side out, now flip it over and do the other side. As you see, most a lot of them, because they lie underneath, they have not even been touched. So now comb that side out. So I'm just going to cut this little loop off at the top. And then taking my pliers, I'm just going to put a little loop on the top so that it doesn't hurt anybody. So making it flat at the top like that. Next thing I'm going to do is so that I can encourage the wool to go out. You have a lot of little tufts of fluff that come off like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on the underside of the feather with some hot glue and then the other pieces will just lie on top of it to create the shape of feather that I want. Now I'm just taking two strands and I'm just going to put two blobs of glue there and stick those in there. And then our feather sits like that. Now we can trim it down. So when you're trimming it, you can choose whatever shape feather that you want. So now I'm going to be trimming the feather down. Now I made extra so that I could cut off to get the right shape feather that I want. So I'm going to be cutting it so that it goes around just like that. I'm just going to trim that all down on both sides. So for the first trim I'm going to be cutting it a little bit bigger than what I want in case I make a mistake. So. fast cut and now we'll see how that sort of like hangs and dangles so I actually am quite happy with that particular cut because now I can just bend it to shape it how I want it to actually lie so that's actually quite nice now I'm just going to give it a shake and have a look at it again and see whether I need to cut it but it looks rather nice like that so I'm going to leave it like that. And now I'm just going to give it a final comb to get some of the pieces that haven't come out properly which are still a bit tight so I'm going to just brush those a bit more so that they can be more fluffy like these ones. So for this next part I'm going to be working in very small areas because as you see we left this part that was all undone. So now to cover this silver wire that's going in the middle I'm going to be putting a blob of hot glue in the middle and then just joining these together so that they can create like a vein that goes through the back and then they'll just open out that way and you won't see the silver wires. So just doing it in very very small areas, you know, small pieces at a time. I'm pulling it as tight as I can along the wire like that so that when you open it you don't see the wire anymore. So just continue doing the whole strip like that. And there's our feather completed. As you can see, you can't see the silver wire underneath it and it's all looking beautiful and soft and fluffy. So it's ready to be put aside to move on to the next step. So the next thing I've got is a green can because I want a green nib on mine. So um, 
I'm going down 9 centimeters and about 2 centimeters wide so we've got cutting area so just cutting that down I'm just using an ordinary pair of scissors to do this. Right, so that's what we've got. Now on the reverse side, I'm just going to draw the shape of the nib that I actually want. So just a small little tip of a nib like that will be fine because it's just a decoration. I'm going down at an angle, just like that. Don't know if you can see this pen. Anyway, and then moving in, pretty much like a snake's head, if you have a look at it like that. I'm going in. And then around just like like that and then we're just going to cut that shape out so we've got a little piece like that so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing a nib on it So it looks like that and when I turn it over I've got my green nib. Now I've cut it a bit wide so that you can see it. So now I'm going to take off about two millimeters so that the nib size is only probably two millimeters wide. So I've cut it to the size that I want and as you can see it's got a really tiny nib. So now we've got this long piece. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start rolling it so that it can buckle in. So just gently roll it so you don't get one big giant kink in the middle. And when you've got a cylindrical shape, it looks like that. So now what I've got is I've got a plastic straw and it's just one of the slightly bigger straws that would probably be a milkshake straw or something. That's the normal size plastic straw. And as you can see, there's quite a difference in the size of it. So I'm going to be using the larger straw. So you've got to shape this so that it can squeeze inside your straw. So continue shaping that until it gets inside the straw. And then just push it all the way in, pretty much to the end of your nib here. So that's what our nib looks like. So now, when you have a look at quills, they normally cut along there so that it can feed the ink. But if you cut that to make it thinner, they're going to curl. So I'm going to be doing the alternative one where it's just got the little hole in the top here. So what I'm doing is I've just taken a piece of the wire that we cut off and I'm going to just put it onto something soft underneath and poke a hole through there. And there's our little nib. Now we're going to add our feather. So now what we're going to do is we're going to trim down the wire from the underneath of the feather. So I'm just going to be cutting off these two sharp pieces here so that they all are in the right position, which that distance is about 12 centimeters. So just cutting the wire off. When it comes time to adding the feather, it's all a personal choice. So um, when you hold your pen, depending on how you hold your pen, whether you hold it like that or like this, it doesn't really matter. Um, so what you're trying to do is the distance from here to the top of your hand you want the feathers to be just a little bit above that so that the feathers are hanging off that side so for me that's about 
12 centimeters, which I'm going to be having the first lot of feathers onto there. So I'm taking from the distance from there to there, I'm taking off 10 centimeters off the normal size straw. So just taking the 10 centimeters off, and then when you put your feather on, you're wanting it to be sitting at about that distance from your quill so or from your nib so when you turn it over you can see there's that much space at the back so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice the straw so that it can slide over the feathers as well to that so we've got the split on the straw and then we're going to test that so I found that it's a little bit too long after testing it, so I'm just going to cut two and a half centimeters off and then recut the slit. So when you're checking it again, when you're sliding that over, you want to have your cut on the same side as your nib. So cutting it on the same side as the nib so that it can actually go over your feathers. I don't want to cut too much, I've cut about two centimeters. So putting nib in again, maneuvering it past the can, and then up over the feather just a wee bit, just to secure the feather onto the pen. And that's for me is in the right position so now I'm going to take some hot glue and glue the wire into the tube but before I do that I'm going to first pad it up a bit so that it doesn't rotate so I'm just going to use some of this excess that came off when we were combing our feather and I'm just going to wrap that around the wire so I'm just putting a wee bit of glue on it and then going to wrap around and then check that that's quite a nice fit so I'll go with that fit now when you're using hot glue make sure that you're using a low temperature hot glue because when you put it onto these little plastic straws it's going to melt before I attach the feather, I'm going to be using this metallic thread. It's very, very fine. It's, you can just about see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gold thread and double it over four times and then twine it all together. So I've got a nice thick piece. So I've taken two meters and I've folded it in half and then half again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just rolling the thread in both directions so I can close it all up by threading it just rolling it like this and then when you get to the end you fold it and it'll just wind around each other so I've wound it all the way to the end and now I'm going to just straighten it out and then when you release it you'll see how it'll just wind around each other I don't know whether the camera is going to catch this, but so it just winds up around each other like that. And then you just straighten it all out and you've got a really nice bit of cord to work with. So now I'm just taking the end pieces and I'm going to thread it through the little hole that you leave at the end. So at the end you've got where you've wound them all together, you've got a loop there that you can thread the one piece through, like that. And then I'm just going to pull that tight so it's a bit of a loop knot. Then we're just going to place that over the nib and pull it tight 
So once you've placed your little loop over your straw, just put a little blob of super glue on the straw and just secure your little piece in place. And then you can start winding that around. And just keep going until you've wound over to as far as you would like to go until you've run out of cord. And then when you reach the end of your cord, just put another little drop of super glue there to secure your cord. And because I want some of the green showing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another row of the gold. So that's how I finish the nib off. Um, you can actually put the feather onto a real nib. However, for myself personally, I prefer to have a pen or a nib that is not working because people tend to always have a fascination for pens and want to see how they write. So if you don't have paper next to your pen, you're going to have writing all over your tablecloth. So that's why I'm doing this one without any ink. But you can use a genuine tip or even just a ballpoint pen by using the same principle so that the feather can go through the straw. So now we're just going to attach the feather. I'm just going to insert that into my nib. Squash the wool down so that you can get it through the little slot. Just pushing it over. Like that. It's now secure so now we're just going to put some glue in there to hold it in place so that it doesn't swivel when somebody tries to write with it. To finish off my quill I've got some of these little rhinestones that I'm going to be using and I've got some nail polish and what I'm going to be doing is I've taken out a, a white, green, blue and a red one which I'm going to be placing along the top of my little design that's going to go into the feather. So I'm just going to do that so long. Take some nail polish out and put some blobs on so long. I'm just using the back of a paintbrush to do this. And then I've got some round diamantes that I'm going to be just gluing on around here. I'm going to use some hot glue to just glue that on. I've added all the little diamantes at the bottom and put the colours on. And I added an extra red one at the top and a green one. And now I'm putting the final piece on, which is like a diamante leaf, which is going to be just placed on the top there. And now I'm going to glue it onto my quill, like that. And that's our fake ostrich feather quill pen. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.